Pride history? Ancient Roman text does tell of the first recorded marriage between two men. You won't believe what they're claiming now. The book of Leviticus in the Bible is changed to suddenly saying that death penalty for men who sleep with other men. The scary thing is that these false historical narratives are being circulated mainstream. Now this was the part of the video that just frosted me. How can Christians push back? Let's talk. Hey guys, I'm Pastor AJ, and before we begin, I'd like to just take a minute to talk to you about Gospel Ministries. We seek to help everyone experience, demonstrate, and share God's great gospel. You can support my ministry and subscribe to my weekly email newsletter at PastorAJ.com. You can also follow me on all other social media platforms at Pastor AJ Platt. Buy some cool merch on my YouTube store and by my new book, End Times Mission, available on Amazon and Audible. Now back to these incredible and warped claims being made by the LGBT community. You need to be aware of these things so that you can help promote truth in our culture while we still have the opportunity to do so. If you're like me, you've been aware of these arguments by the LGBT community, but I'll be honest, I was shocked when I watched what I'm about to show you. Baseless claims about world history, and even worse, the Bible, with little or no evidence and zero sources cited. This particular video was put together by Professor Pride and his channel, Powered by Rainbows. I assure you, friends, there is plenty to be concerned with here from a family and Christian perspective, especially because many in the younger generation are buying these kinds of arguments today and regurgitating them in pop culture. So let's give this a watch and see if you are as shocked as I was. Here are the top 25 most historic days in LGBTQ history. The thing that straight white men have been trying to cover up for centuries, because telling Ooh. our children that we forced millions of black people over on ships to be sold at auction, called women witches and burned them at the stake, and slaughtered Ouch. millions of people in concentration camps might make them think that their ancestors were kind of dicks. But it was Man, once famously said how you that, really quote, feel. those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And I know hmm. what you're thinking. Hold on, Matt. We know about all of these famous times in history of slavery, the Salem witch trials, and World War II. And you can see right away where this guy's coming from. As we move through this, though, I want to actually look at some of the claims that he's making here to see if we can honestly say that history is as gay as he says it was. So why are all of the things you just mentioned still problems in today's society, with severe racist, sexist, and neo-Nazis being a prominent part of our society? Are they? I mean, I personally don't associate with any Nazis or racists. In addition, what do you think about the tone? Because often it seems like those who are just railing against racism in our day are the most intolerant people we can find. And I mean, just listen to the way he's talking about a whole demographic of people here. Well, kids, it's not just your ancestors that were kind of dicks. Some people still are. A little smug too, right? Or is it just me? Anyway, today we thought we'd cover the top 25 most historic moments in LGBTQ history. Before we begin our episode, though, please note that we are going to use the BCE and CE timestamps. You can think of these as the BC and AD, respectively, if you wish, but nowadays the much more accepted way to speak about history is through these before the Common Era and Common Era timestamps. Yeah, yeah, we know what those letters mean, genius. What has happened in our extremely secularized culture is that people have tried to move away from an understanding of history that is based on the life of the most important person that ever lived, the God-man Jesus Christ. And what I think is funny about this designation by secular historians is that it still keeps time by Jesus' life. Maybe just showing your colors here that you are really just a secular atheist or a neo-pagan. I mean, why are you being so forceful with the new letters? I, I forgot. The LGBT community loves letters. To begin our list, let's travel back in time to the year 9,600 before the Common Era. In Sicily, Italy, historians found Mesolithic rock art dating back to 9600 BCE, which depicts phallic male figures in pairs. This is known as the, the, the first recorded depiction of gay porn 
And, and this means what? Everyone was gay, and it wasn't until modern times that we have lost our gayness. You know, in addition, I, I need to point out, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that once you go B.C., it's really hard to pin down dates, especially anything beyond three to 4,000 B.C. In addition to that, there's a lot of conjecture about those dates, whether they can even be accurate. Of course, from a biblical perspective, we know the world isn't more than six to 10,000 years old. But I'm just honestly asking the question, where did we get this date of 9,000 B.C.? Because based on my understanding, Egyptologists, like people who are a lot smarter than this guy, really struggle to pin down major events and dynasties in one of the most well-known ancient civilizations. So how are we getting 9,000 BC from a cave drawing? I'm challenging the date on that. But okay, we've got some really old gay corn on a cave wall. Congratulations. So to anyone who says that being gay is a new age thing, you can remind them that even the cavemen were in fact gay. They Nobody weren't alone though, is. just 1600 years later, in 8000 BCE, another ancient civilization of cavemen in Zimbabwe left many depictions of homosexual partners and intercourse in their cave artwork as well. Though few drawings exist of their partnerships, one in particular stands out. It's a drawing of three males having anal sex another gay couple embracing face to face, and yet another couple where the one partner is guiding the other's wrecked penis towards his behind. In their society, homosexual partnerships were considered good. Where the okay, another leap. I don't know if you're following the logic here. We find gay corn in a cave, and then a continent away, we find more gay corn. Clearly, this leads us to believe that Everyone was gay. I mean, really, nothing bigger than this has happened in your history? And I got to be honest, this guy's smugness really bothers me. Like, uh, can I get someone from the LGBT community out there to tell me, do you think this guy's being smug? Because I know as Christians, we always try to present ourselves in a way where we're loving and respectful to other people. At least we do our best. If you're trying to win over a population to your ideas, especially blatant, felonious propaganda, do you think it'd be helpful maybe to, I don't know, be a little... Nice. 120 years later, we travel to ancient Egypt for the year 2380 BCE. In this year, two royal servants began working for the sixth pharaoh of the fifth dynasty. Their names were Kenum and... Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm guessing he's going to say, shocker, that a couple of ancient Egyptians were gay. Again, clearly we can deduct from this that everyone was gay. These were not the names they were born with though. Kenumhotep means Kenum is satisfied and Nyankum means life belongs to Kenum. Their tomb is lined with artwork depicting their love, including one piece where the two are standing Aww. nose to nose, which is the most intimate pose allowed in Egyptian artwork. Another Aww. where the two are holding hands and yet another where they are surrounded by their children. And yes, you heard that right. This gay couple had children. Their relationship oh. is widely known as the first same-sex couple. We mentioned a moment ago widely some known. cavemen drawings. I didn't know about but it. But this is the first recorded case where we know their exact names and most everything about their relationship. Okay, shocker, everyone. There were gay people in ancient Egypt. I know, <laughs> shocking. And while their joint tomb tells us that they were widely accepted as a gay couple in the Egyptian times. Like many other rich tombs it? filled with expensive possessions, their tomb was also ransacked by others after they both died, when their bodies were removed from the tomb and their whereabouts are currently unknown. Traveling another thousand years in the future, we travel to 1075 BCE to the Middle Azrian Empire. This empire covered present-day Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. In the year 1075 BCE, the empire introduced a law that decreed that any man caught with another man should be castrated. This is the earliest record of any anti-LGBTQ law 
and the reason this law was introduced is entirely unknown. So we're still pretty early here. And, uh, you know, assuming the dates are correct, I'm obviously challenging anything he lists pre-ancient Egypt because the fact of the matter is we just don't know. So I'm going to assume that it's really all around the same time period. And here we have an ancient extant law against sodomy. And interestingly, it's not from a Judeo-Christian culture. So take note of this. What could the reason have been? Maybe they realized, like many of us do today, that this is an egregious offense to humanity and an affront to civilization. So let's speculate on that. Why did they make this law all the way back then? Just 75 years later in North America, the Native Americans had a flourishing culture. But this year is when three of their tribes, named Ojibwe, Navajo, and Cheyenne, started having words in their language for those who identify as a gender. Okay, how do we get this date? I mean, did, did the Navajo keep written records? I mean, I, I think we're still in like, like 1500 BC-ish, somewhere in there, like 3,500 years ago. To my understanding, there's really not a whole lot we know about the history of Native American culture beyond some of the larger civilizations that were in Middle America. Of course, everyone knows about the famous Mayan calendar, but how are we going back this far with certainty? Like, where are we getting these dates from? Other than their birth sex. Though many believe transgender and gender non-conforming individuals existed long before this era, this is the first recorded time in history when entire societies came up with words in their language to define genders beyond the binary. Another thing we have to understand when we're listening to blatant propaganda like this is that there is a distinct difference in the way Bible-believing Christians or those coming from a Judeo-Christian culture view the ancient world. Obviously, nobody is saying that homosexuality didn't exist before a few hundred years ago. I mean, in our book, the Bible, we see a pretty famous example of God's judgment on a culture for these very sins. Speaking of which, I wonder if he's going to cover Sodom. What's important to note is that all of these cultures he's mentioning are pagan cultures. You could go back to ancient Greece or Native America. Scant archaeological evidence of the existence of LGBT does not prove its widespread approval. And on top of that, what you're really saying to people of faith, if that's the line of argument you want to use, is that you would like to resurrect some of these barbaric pagan practices in a largely modern, civilized, and Christian context. I think some better questions to ask might be, why did God judge Sodom and Gomorrah for what they did? Why did many of these ancient civilizations still have laws against these practices? Could it be that they saw some of the things that we see today and that that is that there are some elements to these lifestyles that are dysfunctional in terms of basic human relationships and when it's become widespread? Just like it is in our day, it leads to a greater overall moral decay and the eventual collapse of a civilization. Food for thought. Thus, this is why we refer to the Native Americans as the first society to really embrace the gender spectrum. Like, like would the Native Americans characterize themselves that way? L like the real ones, I mean, like... You know, the ones that were living 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 400 years ago, the ones that the settlers met. I, I'm just curious because sometimes we like to project backward onto history, but would they actually characterize themselves this way? I highly doubt it. Another 500 years into the future, the book of Leviticus in the Bible is changed to suddenly saying that death penalty is necessary for men who sleep with other men. No one knows why the text was changed, but it begins a long list of horrifying events to come that go against the original Bible. Okay, now this was the part of the video that just frosted me. There is literally no basis in reality for the claim this man just made. I don't know if y'all realize this, but the oldest manuscripts that we have of the Old Testament only date to about 200 BC. You've probably heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls. How would we know if the Bible was changed in 500 BC? What he's really talking about here, although he doesn't say it or cite any sources, is this sketchy idea that the first five books of the Bible weren't actually written by Moses and they weren't written down until 
about 500 BC. I'm guessing that's what he was referring to. But that idea just comes from modern textual criticism, which again projects backward into history and makes assumptions about ancient peoples that most of them couldn't read or write. Thus, in their mind's eye, there would be no reason for a written record of the Bible as we know it today. There is evidence to the contrary on this, such as the discovery of some proto-Hebrew writing, which itself points to the fact that maybe the first alphabet wasn't Phoenician, but Hebrew. I'll link a video in the description so you can see what I'm talking about on this, but I just wanted to point this out that I am actually somewhat of a Bible scholar, and there is literally no basis for the statement that he just made that this verse in Leviticus was changed. There cannot be any evidence because the oldest biblical manuscripts we have are from about 200 BC. But this is what the LGBT community is saying today. They're saying that the Bible was altered, like the one in Leviticus he mentioned, like the beginning of the book of Romans, like 1 Corinthians, trying to assert that the practices of the modern community were widespread and socially acceptable, like they're trying to make them today. And the reason we don't think they were is just because we don't really have a true understanding of the Bible. I don't know where this man stands with Jesus. I hope that One day he comes to a saving knowledge of him. I think it will relieve him of a lot of the anger that's pent up on the inside. It's a much more peaceful lifestyle, far more fulfilling than being filled with the hatred that you have for a culture that produced you and gave you the freedoms that you have. So that's my prayer for this guy. But this is one we got to stop in its tracks, Christians. This is a blatant lie and piece of propaganda from this particular community about our Bible that has no basis in reality. But they're saying it to our kids and to a culture at large that buys it hook, line, and sinker. 500 more years into the future in the year 27 BCE, we travel to the ancient Roman Empire under the reign of Augustus. The Romans introduced laws to allow same-sex marriage, which is the first time in human history this is done. Again, a overwhelmingly pagan cultures, in case you don't know, that don't have and worship Christ as their head are led and guided by demons. The Romans were also known for being excessively brutal. Everybody knows about the games in the Colosseums where they threw Christians and others to wild beasts and, of course, how they would crucify people. One of the most brutal forms of execution. And in that time, it wasn't uncommon to see them lining the road like modern telephone poles. Is that the culture we really want to go back to? Though it is not known which two men were the first in recorded history to be married, nor do we care. Roman text does tell of the first recorded marriage between two men in this year. Traveling more than 100 years into the future, we stay in the Roman Empire for the year 98 in the current era. This is when the Roman emperor, and it's pronounced Trajan. Was he trying to make it sound like, like trans gen or <laughs> I've always heard it pronounced Trajan. I'm surprised he didn't go with Hadrian, who was Trajan's successor. Hadrian had a male lover named Antonius that he actually created a cult worship for when he suffered an untimely death. That's the one I would have talked about. But, you know, I mean, weren't all the Roman emperors gay? I mean, everybody knows Nero was totally perverted. He would dress up in the cloaks of wild animals and attack the private parts of his victims. Tiberius was gay and a pedophile. One of the kids that they think he molested was his successor, Caligula. And if you've studied anything about him, it explains a lot. But again, you've got pagan empire, lavishly decadent society, incredible increase in perversion, especially on the elite levels. These were things that the Christians of their day stood sharply against. You can read about it not only in the Bible, but also in the church fathers, because we've got writings from that second generation of Christians that talk about sexual purity and lots of other cultural issues that are very similar to the things that we're dealing with today. Takes the throne. To this day, historians look at him as one of Rome's most beloved emperors, But what brings him to our (laughs) list today is that he was also openly gay. This means he... He wasn't the only one, buddy. But really, Augustus was probably Rome's most beloved emperor. He was the first recorded gay man to hold such a powerful office. 550... They were all gay. All of the Roman emperors. And what about Alexander the Great? 
who was about 400 years before that guy. Supposedly, he had a male lover that he was pretty into. 50 years later, in 654 CE, we travel to the Visigoths Empire, which covers present-day southern France. In the year 654, they passed a law which criminalized sodomy, which is the act of having either oral or anal sexual intercourse. Though we some don't need you to explain it to us, but thank by you. this law, the law mostly targeted homosexuals. The Visigoth Empire was the first to introduce such a sodomy law in all of Europe. Now we travel more than 700 years into the future, to the year 1382 CE. This is when the Catholic Bible was translated. Suddenly a verse in the Bible describing that a much older man should not be with a very young boy and describing pedophilia as a wrongful act suddenly was changed to describe men of the same age being wrong too. No one really knows why they severely changed the original text to now be homophobic instead of strictly translating the text as they were hired to do. But some speculate their homophobia had a large effect on the new text and therefore the culture over the coming centuries. And this is the lie that they're spreading today. They're talking about 1 Corinthians 6, 9, which reads, Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Now, you don't just need this scripture verse to know that homosexuality as a lifestyle is an affront to God and nature. There are other places in the scriptures like Leviticus where it says that a man shall not lay with a man like one lays with a woman. There's also the rather lengthy passage in the beginning of Paul's letter to the Romans that descriptively explains the same thing. There is also by inference the creation narrative itself where God created them binary, male and female, and then brought the two together in the first marriage. In other words, God created and is defining human sexual relationships in these things. It's around a marriage between a man and a woman that a family is built. This is also the basic authority structure for human society. It's the family unit. A family is something that two men cannot create. But here we go again, this suggestion that the Bible was changed and we really just don't understand it. So th this is kind of a big deal, folks. These things are being taught to our children today. And it's easy to get the word out on TikTok. It's easy to make a YouTube video saying whatever you want to say, even if you know 90% of what you're saying is ridiculous and false claims about the past, whereby we're projecting our modern filth onto ancient cultures in such a way that it somehow validates the way we're currently living. Like, does anybody understand the stuff that the ancient Roman emperors did? They were gross, disgusting, immoral pagans. They were murderers and dictators and perverts. I don't think these are the places we want to look historically to validate our current bad behavior. I mean, what happened to all of these ancient civilizations? They collapsed. Maybe we're on the verge of that now. It sure looks like it. And I think what we need today are some strong Christians who are willing to stand up to this culture-wide propaganda and historical revisionism. And we really need to start to think as parents, as believers, as human beings about the kind of culture that we want to create. Because I'm telling you, when you look out there, this thing's getting away from us real quick. And you might be like me at an age where, you know, it, it doesn't affect you too much. But if you're also like me, you got kids, you got grandkids in this community. So we better start standing up against some of this stuff before we find ourselves in a position, maybe even a short time from now, where we don't have a voice. And at that point, it's going to be too late because this narrative is the one our kids are going to be reading about in their textbooks. Okay, folks, that's about all I wanted to cover in this video. The video we're reviewing, however, is only about half over. And from here, he launches into more of the modern history of the LGBT movement with many of the same themes we've seen already. Modern Western culture, Christianity, and Europeans, bad. Homosexuals and the gay community victims and the true heroes of our civilization. Friends, I made this video today to make you aware of what's going on out there right under your nose, whether you realize it or not. And I'm strongly encouraging you as a parent, as a person, as a citizen to stand up against these things vocally, 
publicly in your community and Lord willing, even in our nation. Because I think we can see where this is all going. In addition, when you hear claims made like this, historical claims, scientific claims by any group, think critically about what they're saying. Teach your kids to think critically. And when you're able, ask for people to show you factually where they are getting their information from. And as a Christian who's filled with the Holy Spirit, let God's word guide your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. If you are part of the LGBT community, my message to you is to think critically for yourself. Don't use false claims like this to prove your argument, or God forbid, to try to rewrite history. In addition, I would encourage you to stop walking in a sinful lifestyle. The Lord Jesus has something that's so much deeper and better for you. And if you're willing to listen to what I have to say, I truly believe that God will change your life. Well, that's all I have for now, friends. Like I said, I will continue this discussion in part two, where we'll analyze a little bit more of the contemporary history of the LGBT community. I'll see you in the next video, friends. Peace.